Mr. President, thank you for a fabulous uh, tour de force here on, on this subject. Uh, I claim some seniority here uh, in the sense that I first found out about wind power just south of Iceland in 1940 in a hurricane with 70-foot waves, and I thought I was going to drown. I thought we'd capsize. I just read recently that Denmark has excess wind power, mm -hmm. uh, windmill power energy uh, developed from windmills, mm -hmm. which they sell sometimes uh, to other Scandinavian countries. Could you also mention what uh, your country is doing on wind power? Well, although we have a lot of wind, as you, uh, you demonstrated, uh, we have been blessed by the Almighty with uh, such enormous hydro and geothermal resources that up to now we have not yet had to tap the wind resources. But you are absolutely correct to pro point out the case of Denmark with respect to wind, because I think this is one of the neglected cases in terms of people being aware what Denmark has done uh, in this area. And I sometimes say to my friends in the United Kingdom when they are discussing the future why is it that Denmark has uh, exceeded the United Kingdom enormously in terms of wind energy production, whereas the United Kingdom, basically situated in the same place on the globe, could also do the same? And the combination of different clean energy sources, solar, wind, geothermal, within the same power system, even within the same national grids, is, I think, one of the most productive and positive aspects of these developments. But we have tended up to now to talk about them in separate boxes. We talk about wind power separately, we talk about solar power separately, we talk about geothermal separately, hydro separately, and so on. We need to integrate them all. And for example, in the case of Africa, there are in many countries in Africa, in the Rift Valley, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Djibouti, which of course have enormous potential for sun power but they also have enormous potential for geothermal power. We are engaged in Iceland in cooperation with Djibouti, which now relies completely on oil for its energy resources to transform Djibouti into an almost comprehensive geothermal country, making Djibouti hopefully uh, in a not such a long time the first clean energy country in Africa. And uh, in India, I learned on my last visit, there has been enormous fascinating progress in India in terms of wind and solar power. And this has not been very much noted uh, by the rest of the world. Even some people of, in India tell me that's not been noted sufficiently in India. And by combining those resources uh, with geothermal and hydro, one can create in countries like India and China a very Im impressive, comprehensive networks of, of different clean energy resources. And California, here in the United States, and many other states within the Union, also have, have this potential uh, to, to a large extent. I was in Mexico a few weeks ago on a state visit, and I found it very interesting to talk both to the president and the different governors and others about the possibility of linking up solar, wind, and geothermal uh, uh, energy to make Mexico uh, a much stronger clean energy country than it has been up to, up to now. So I think fundamentally we need to start talking about integrating all these different sources of, of clean energy.